Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're safe and well. And today we're going to look at how you can use a program or a phone app like Miro or Chair Gun to work out your aim points and your um, range card for your rifle. When we've done that, we'll compare it to uh, the results that we got from the other method in the previous video. So, let's roll the titles. Well, here we are back on the garden range. Um, first, need to go through some items of equipment that we need to, to, uh, to go through this process. It's a step-by-step -step process. First thing is we're going to be using the chrono, uh, chronograph to work out the muzzle velocity of the rifle. Secondly, you're going to need a, uh, a tape measure or uh, an accurate um, Range finder, that's the word, an accurate range finder uh, to set up your two shooting positions. We're going to be shooting groups at two positions. And finally, you need a big enough target that is going to take uh, the drop, the potential drop. So we'll be shooting uh, one group at the top and then because of the drop of the pellet, we'll be shooting another group at the bottom. Um, so, oh, and also not forgetting you need um, a nice stable shooting platform from which to do this so the, the, your, your gun's rested stably. So I will be using my homemade shooting table again. So a stage by stage process. I won't be able to record this video sort of like non-stop. I'll have to keep stopping and starting. So what I'm gonna do now is set up to uh, uh, set the chrono up so that we can record the, uh, uh, the velocity of the rifle. That's the first thing we'll do. Well, we're all set up, ready to go then, with the chronograph. <clears throat> Only going to be putting five shots through rather than ten to uh, speed things up. Um, so, without further ado, we're using the same setup as before. The Air Arms S400, port vantage scope, and the um, Air Arms Field 8.44 grain pellets. Here we go then. Okay, so I've got those uh, in the memory of the, um, the chronograph and um, I'll stop the tape, work out what the uh, average muzzle velocity was. Okay, so that's step one completed. We've got the muzzle velocity. Step two is we need to record the sight height on our rifle. Now, me, like probably most of you until a couple of months ago, just assumed that sight height was measuring the centre of the barrel up to the centre of the objective lens. But um, turns out I was wrong, okay? The sight height refers to uh, the height of uh, the, or the difference between... <laughs> Let me think, how's the best way to explain this? The sight height is the difference between the pellet trajectory when it comes out the muzzle of the rifle and the line of sight from the uh, from your scope at the muzzle of the rifle not where the scope is mounted back on the block so in order to measure this you need to do a thing called the tin foil test okay so I'm going to explain what the tin foil test is basically what you do is you get a piece of tin foil I've take, had to take the, uh, the scope cap off for this. Bit of tin foil held on with a rubber band 
then made a little hole with a cocktail stick in the front end of the tin foil right in the center of the lens and then reduced the side focus down to um, the minimum distance and also reduced my magnification down to the minimum as well. The reason that you do this is that then when I look through the scope I should be able to see uh, the cross marked on on the target in front of me. There you can see target in front of me with a little cross. Because that's so close without uh, using this uh, bit of tin foil you'd never get that in focus enough. So what I'm going to do now is take one shot uh, with the crosshairs aligned up with that cross and then we can measure the distance from the centre of the cross down to the centre of the pellet to get the sight height. Okay, let's give it a go. Need to get the muzzle as close to the target as possible. There we go. Okay. So let's measure that. Nothing like being prepared, is there? It's got me ruler. Just want to mention, actually, while in passing, this box. This is what I call my backstop box. I've seen other people using these. I made this um, from a bit of MDF, really. Uh, just a bit of scrap MDF with a couple of sections at the back just to, um, to strengthen the back up. Um, it's just got a bit of cardboard pinned on the front so that as it gets used, uh, I can change the cardboard. The cardboard's there just to stop any uh, recoil, any pellets coming back. But the whole thing is uh, you could fill it with sand. I've got mine packed with rags. Um, and it's really handy for if you want to use your chrono in a confined space where you haven't got any distance. I mean, I even use this inside quite safely without a problem. It's very quick and simple to knock up, but it's a really handy bit of kit. So... <laughs> Back to our target then, got our target, we'll give that a measure, see how many millimetres that is, and I make that 43 millimetres, so that's what I'm going to write down, 43 millimetres, if I can collect my pen, as I say, nothing like being prepared is there, so sight height is 43 millimeters right now after watching that you might think oh, that's a bit of a faff why do I have to go through that to get my sight height there is a rule of thumb okay so what we'll do is I'm going to just pull that off of there I'm going to quickly make a rough approximation of the sight height here by I'm going to be measuring from the center of the barrel to the center of uh, the objective lens and see what what measurement I get. Just going to eyeball it for now rather than do it per perfectly. And I reckon that is, say for sake, 45 millimeters. Right, so remember 45 millimeters. And all, in, all you have to do to get an approximation of what you'd get is uh, of from doing the tin foil method is to subtract five percent. So if I put 45 in my calculator and times it by 0.95, I'll get 95 percent of that, uh, and that's the figure that you can use for sight height rather than having to do the tin foil method if you don't want to do the tin foil method. So. There you go, so that's our second item that we need to do. What I need to do now is uh, set the uh, target out and, um, and set our shooting position up so that our, the muzzle of the rifle is near enough exactly um, 25 yards, which is at a zero range, from the target and put down a group. 
So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to set up and then I'll come back and we'll do that. Right, so we move the shooting table back and uh, I've used my measuring tape to ensure as accurately as possible that the end of the muzzle of the rifle is exactly 27 yards, sorry not 27 yards, 25 yards from the target which is our zero range. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a quick five shot group uh, to provide a reference for when we go further back to do our point of impact. So without further ado, let's shoot. Okay, for the next bit then, we need to be back a minimum of one and a quarter times our zero range uh, to work out what our ballistic coefficient is going to be using the point of impact method, which is what this is. Ideally, you want to be two to three times, but the minimum is one and a quarter times. Now, the furthest I can come back is 50 yards, so I'm two times back from... Um, two times 25 yards so that should be uh, good enough what I'm going to be doing is using the previous group of shots that I put down at 25 yards as my aiming point and trying to create as tight a group as possible uh, below that so that we can take a measurement so let's begin Well that's five shots, I've got no idea where they went because I can't see them from up here. So we'll, uh, we'll go down and take a look. Well, I've just been down, the, uh, down to where the target is. And uh, not a bad group, but um, because the target's in the shade, I'm so far back and I'm sort of a little bit in the shade here. It's very difficult through the scope to see where the second group was. So what I've done is use the marker pen to move, move, mark the two groups because the final thing that I need to do here is record my magnification which is 10 times and I need to line my uh, crosshairs up with the top group and then read off how many mil dots as accurately as I can uh, down to the group that I've just shot and make a note of that which is what I'm going to do now So that's lined up and that line that I made is just touching the top of the second mill dot which means to the nearest tenth that would be 1.9 mill dots. So we're going to say 1.9 mill dots and put that on our sheet. So I need to go and check my sheet but I think, oh yeah there's one, one more thing, almost forgot. One more thing we need to record, and that's the environmental factors. So, um, what I need to do is, <laughs> it's a bit awkward because I'm filming on my phone and I use, need to use my phone to get the information. But what I need to do now is to go online, find a weather site, an appropriate weather site, and find the temperature, uh, the pressure, and the humidity for my location here, and record those as well. And that's all the information that we've got and uh, then we can go and put that into the program and um, get the information out of it that we want so that's the next step we will be back on the um, on the digital white screen so here we are then back on our screen 
though uh, not so white at the moment. Before we continue, just want to take a look at this card uh, that I shot at these two distances. First up at the top here, um, I had one wayward shot, so I ended up shooting six shots. So that's a five shot group there, and that is a five mil group at 25 yards, center to center. If we come down here at 50 yards, if we ignore this shot at the top here first, we've got an 11 mil group center to center. And if we take that one, it takes it up to 17 mil. What a fantastic rifle this Air Arms S400 is. Now, I mean, bearing in mind I'm a relative beginner, I wouldn't say that I'm a, a crack shot by any means. Still got a lot to learn and um, a lot of improvement to make. But it just goes to show, you know, that what is achievable um, with such a cracking, you know, low cost rifle. I mean, sort of low cost if you if you pick one up second hand like I did. You know, I mean, what would, what more do you need? <laughs> you know, 11, four shots at 11 mils at 50 yards, cracking stuff. Anyway, so let's move on then. Uh, let's look at our data that we've collected. So going down the list, uh, we did an average of five shots through the chronograph and uh, I added them together and divided by five and come up with this 760.42 feet per second. Uh, we know our zero range now because because we've just got one zero uh, because we're um, uh, because of the way we're set up to, um, to to zero the rifle to avoid two zeros uh, for the benefits of the program this is classed as the far zero I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense but uh, but trust me you need to the um, your your zero range for the shortest distance has to be input as the far zero. The sight height that we measured using the tin foil method, 43 millimetres. Our target range, which was our, our distance shot, uh, that we managed two times, which I mentioned had to be at least a minimum of one and a quarter times, but we managed two times, that's 50 yards. The point of impact to the target, we had a drop of minus 83 millimetres. Um, when I marked that target up with those two black marks that you just saw, uh, at 10 times magnification at 50 yards, they were showing up as uh, 1.9 mil dot separation. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the differences between indicated magnification and calibration magnification. Indicated magnification is the magnification that is indicated on your scope. So in my case, I had my scope set to 10 times. The calibration magnification, that is, uh, because this is a second focal plane scope, as I mentioned, if you've watched a previous video where I talk about scopes and talk about the difference between first focal plane and second focal plane, as you change the magnification on a second focal plane scope, uh, the, uh, the reticle in relation to what you're looking at changes. So the manufacturer will always tell you what magnification gives you a true representation of uh, the reticle, particularly if it's a mill dot reticle. And uh, this Hawk scope, uh, Hawk is saying that at 10 times, uh, the half mil dot reticle is giving a true representation of mil dots. So that's what we use there. Uh, the pellets we used, 177 air arms filled pellets, 8.4 grain. And finally, um, the environmentals that we that uh, you didn't see me record, but I used a, um, uh, a little uh, weather app on my phone and I found that in my location at the time of shooting, it was 25 degrees centigrade, pressure was 1014, and the ambient humidity was 51%. So there we go, that's the data that we've got. Um, now, where do we go to get the program to put this data in? Okay, let's call up the website. Right, so here's, here's the website that you need to go to, gpc.photosoft, that's photo with an F, F uh, .co.uk. I'll put a link up at the bottom of the screen here so you can see where to go. And um, I think uh, you can get this program. Yeah, I think this program runs both in Windows and on Apple as well. Um, there are another, uh, 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 some other uh, programs here that you might find useful. And there are also the Android apps that are available in the Google Play Store. Um, and we'll look at those later. So this is where you go to download the program. 
Uh, and I think I mentioned before, the reason that I'm using this is because this is a current program that's being regularly updated. Um, the standard program you hear anybody, everybody talking about, um, Chair Gun, uh, you can still find it to download and install it uh, if you uh, search on your computer, but um, it's not supported anymore. Um, so there are no further updates, uh, whereas this, this is more modern and say is regularly updated, which is why I use this. So let's call the program up and you can have a look and see what it. So here we are in the main program screen then. You'll see we have um, all our data entry points on the left. We have a little table here showing the range and um, uh, the mill dot uh, point of impact that relates to this graft, graph. Uh, various uh, different screens at the top. We can go to just a table. We can go to the reticle which give us, gives us a range card. Uh, we have a range finder. We can work out vertical drift, inclines. We can print the scope label. Um, and we can print out a more uh, inf a, a bigger range card with a bit more information. So uh, let's go back to plots and graphs. But first things first, we need to transfer all the data we've collected into the program. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click on the tools in uh, button, and we want the environmental box, and we need to put in our um, environmental factors. So our temperature was 25. Our pressure was 1014 and our relative humidity was 51. So don't need to worry about mean sea level pressure or the elevation that will work that out itself. And we just click on the accept button and you'll see that our information is now in this little box in the bottom here. Next, we need to click on the projectiles database select our 177 pellets and go up and find air arms field pellets and click on accept on that. Now this ballistic coefficient here is the one that is published by the manufacturer. We're going to change that in a minute but for the moment it will stay as 195. Next we need to make sure we're using the right drag law. Now traditionally um, the drag law for um, round nose Diablo pellets uh, was this GA drag law, which is, uh, I assume has been imported from chair gun. Uh, but I'm going to use this one, GA2, and if I highlight it, you see the box comes up and it says it's Ballistic Boys Contender for round nose Diablo air gun pellets. So this guy, uh, Ballistic Boy, is, um, is the the forum name of a chap on the air gun forum who uh, is very knowledgeable about ballistics and he has modified the GA drag law to uh, bring it up to date basically so it should be more accurate than the standard GA drag law for modern day round nose Diablo pellets so that's one we're going to be using so uh, we'll select that leave that as it is right the velocity we need to put in our muzzle velocity We've, you can see here we can select feet per second or meters per second, even Mach numbers if we've got the muzzle velocity of a jet fighter. Uh, but we'll stick, we'll stick with feet per second. And uh, what were we? We were 760.4. So we'll put in 0.4 and enter that. And you'll, you'll notice every time we enter something, all the data and the graph changes. Um, so the next thing, far zero. Um, is 25 yards explain that uh, you know that that um, why that was far zero uh, also we we could put in feet or meters if we wanted to but uh, we'll stick in yards so next thing I need to do is the site height and measure the site height with the tinfoil method to be 43 millimeters so we stick that in uh, target range was 50 yards, so our target range there is that's correct. And you see, there's a drop down. We can change that to feet or meters as well. Uh, just notice that because the program knows the pellet weight and knows our muzzle velocity, it it has calculated our muzzle energy at 
just under 10.8 foot pounds. So um, we know we're uh, we've got a legal rifle. Uh, do, 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 do. Right. So now we need to go up into the tools menu and we'll open up the ballistic coefficient calculator and you can see at the moment that it is showing a ballistic coefficient of uh, 0 0.0195 which as I mentioned was the manufacturer's posted one. Now there are four different methods uh, here to work out your uh, ballistic coefficient. We're using this top corner one the point of impact at target and uh, we want to put in minus 83 millimeters and you'll see that that changes the BC to 200 we'll accept that and that places that in the target and the flash shows us everything changed uh, we need to put in our dots per dots at target which was 1.9 mil dots and enter that um, it was a second focal plane scope You'll see here that our calibration magnification was 10 times. This program is suggesting that the actual calibration magnification on the, the scope is actually 10.56 because it's done this calculation with this distance and uh, with the um, uh, point of impact change that we had. Okay. Um, that's everything that we need to put in there. Oh, the barrel length, we'll put, we'll, we'll put the barrel length in. And that was 493.5, which rounds that up to 494. Okay, so that's the, all the data in. So what I'm going to do now is click on tables to bring up the table, because what I'm interested in is this point of impact dot and point of impact millimetres. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open the uh, table that I made up with the data from uh, that what we observed when we're out on the range shooting at all these different distances uh, in the last video. So let's make a comparison. So then if we look at eight yards, uh, Mero is saying we should expect a minus 18 millimeter drop and we uh, uh, actually got a minus 16. Uh, so only two millimeters, not bad. Uh, only two millimeters difference. 10 yards, Miro saying minus 13, we had minus 12, so only one millimeter there. 13 minus 7, we said minus 7, so we're spot on. 15 minus 4, we had minus 4, so we're spot on. At 20, 0, we said 0. 25, our 0 range, that's 0 as well, obviously. We come down to 30. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Miro is saying. Uh, minus five millimeters and we found uh, we we observed minus 11 but if you remember in that video I did a, we, I did sort of talk about this saying that I I thought that that was a little bit low and I would have expected that not to be such a big drop uh, but when we measured it through the scope uh, I observed a, a quarter mil dot drop and Mero saying a 0.21 mil dot drop so four tenths of a mil, uh, four hundredths of a mil dot out. Are we going to quibble on that? Uh, I think if I was, uh, I'd be using that aim point and that seems to correlate with this one. So I'd be happy with that. 35 yards minus 16 and we measured minus 14. We said a half mil dot and Mero saying 0.53. So they, they correlate as well. 40 yards, Mero saying minus 33 millimetres drop, and we found minus 35. So um, that's pretty good. One mil dot there and 0.93 there. And then 45, this is where we, where, yeah, I was a bit surprised again. Uh, we found in practice uh, minus 44 uh, millimetres, and Mero saying minus 55. Uh, but we obse I observed through the scope uh, that it was roughly around the one uh, and a quarter mil dot holdover mark. And Mero saying, well, near as damn it, 1.4. So we're not too far out. Um, we know that in practice, this is what we're getting on the range. Um, but if we were using 1.4 at 45 yards on a 
35 millimeter target and HFT, you're not going to notice a difference. So, um, so that's all pretty cool. So let's get rid of that. We'll call up the reticle range card. Now you can, you've, if you go up into the reticle menus here, you can see for mil dot reticles. Oh, where are we? Uh, you've got a good selection of um, the normal uh, reticles that you come to expect, like um, uh, the AMX uh, Hawk AMX uh, reticle, Optizan's CP reticle, um, one for Discovery scopes, one for Vipers. Uh, and the SCP type, SCB types as well. So you can you can generally find something that represents your reticle on your range card. Um, let's call up our range card that we produced in the last video and make a comparison. So if we look here, then coming up from the bottom here, we were saying eight yards was two mil dots. If we look at two mil dots. Uh, Mero saying 8.6, so not too far out there. Uh, 10 yards, we saw at a quarter, a one and a quarter. Mero saying 9.7 at one and a half, and there's their 11 at one. So, yeah, we're in that ballpark range. Mero's in the same ballpark range as us there, roughly. Uh, we said 13 yards at half a mil dot, and Mero's saying 14. And then we get up to the top, Mero's saying that the flattened top of our trajectory is actually starting from 19 yards through to 25. So therefore we're crosshairs at any of those ranges. Then coming down the right hand side, half a mil dot, yeah we agree, 35 yards. Uh, <clears throat> we said 40 yards at one mil dot, Mero said 41. And then we've gone one and a quarter mil dots at 45 yards and um, Mero's gone 46 at one and a half. So they're saying 45 yards somewhere in there, which is not going to be too far off given that range. So as you can see, if you just used this format for working out your range card, uh, you've got a pretty accurate representation here of what you're going to see in practice. Uh, and to be honest, there are some minor differences, but if you was to take this range card out with that rifle and shoot this on a course, uh, I think it's unlikely that if you got your ranging right, that you would miss any targets uh, using this range card. Um, so another thing to mention here as well is, um, I did point out in the last video that uh, one of the weaknesses of that method does, was that if you changed anything on your rifle, Say for example, you put uh, you put a, a, a different scope in on, or you uh, or different scope mounts, or you change the uh, the power on your rifle, or if you use different pellets, then you'd have to redo those because they wouldn't work. Uh, you know, they wouldn't be accurate for in, for those changes you made. The nice thing about this is once we've saved this in here, we can call this up any time. Uh, and change it, modify it, move it around. So say for example, um, you changed your sight height, you put um, you, <clears throat> you put uh, scope rings on that were say five mil higher. So we can put 48 in there and add that. Uh, and that you can see that's made changes to our range card. If we wanted to zero at 35 yards instead of 25, we can put 35 in there. Uh, 35 yards and again you can see that um, we've had we've got changes to the range card so from that point of view it's very useful so that's Mero then before we go um, you will if you uh, if you if you go online uh, on discussion forums and uh, even on some of the Facebook groups go, uh, uh, as well you will hear mention of a program called Chair Gun because it was used quite widely. Um, say it's no longer supported, but if you do a search online, uh, you probably find uh, an old version that you can download and install. So let's have a quick look and see how that compares. So here we have Chair Gun then, and if if you'll notice the uh, the layout slightly different, but the information's the same. We've got the uh, the data entry box at the top instead of down the left hand side. 
we've got our ballistics table and we've got our um, graph we can switch between these so we can just have the graph or just the table or both um, these you can you notice from the top you've got tabs so that you can uh, put in information for different weapons as well um, along the top we've got the reticles database um, we've got projectiles database um, there's a toolbox for, cali for doing different calibrations um, but um, does very similar similar things uh, notice here with the drag law we've only got the GA we haven't got the GA2 drag law on this um, and I don't think there's a ballistic let's have a look in the toolbox I don't think there's a ballistic calculator um, calculate BC from calculate BC from point of impact at the range oh there we go so you can see there I've called that called this over it's taken the muzzle velocity from from this data entry and and our ranges and our sight height and um, we can put in let's put in our eight point what was it 83 mil wasn't it so let's put in minus 8.3 centimeters into that and click OK yeah so yeah so you can do this you, you know it's 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 almost identical to Mero just a different different layout um, but the formats the same so if you find an old copy of this you can use this but uh, as I say it's not supported anymore at least with Miro you get regular updates and bug fixes and things uh, um, so personally I would recommend that you go with that one but horses for courses pay your money you take your choice but in this case they're both free so anyway <laughs> that's the that's all I've got uh, so let's have a let's have a look at um, what Miro looks like on an Android phone in the Miro app Here's the Mero app on my uh, Android phone then. As you can see, you've got the um, range card at the top. Let's work down and work out how, where to fill everything in. So again, you've got uh, your muzzle velocity and your far zero, which is our um, zero range. Sight height and target range. Calibration mag 10 times clicks per mower there projectile weight uh, weight and everything if um, if you click in the menus at the top you see here that you've got you can enter the environment variables go back you've got the projectile database and you can open up the tables to get your point of impact and stuff uh, you've got the BC calculator, slightly differently different here, as you have to put all the information in. Um, it doesn't automatically take the information from the main screen. So we select that we're using one chronograph, uh, put in our muzzle velocity, put in our far zero target range, and then put in our point of impact, and it will come up and calculate. And we're using the GA2 drag law again. Um, the only thing that I found different on this is that you need to go into uh, settings to put in your dots per target at 50 yards. That's for some reason it's in a different it's in a different menu. Um, so we'll click OK on there. But you can see the, um, the the information it gives you um, and the the range card is the same. One of the the nice things about this is that you can change your target range here. Um, and it will tell you, look, at 50 yards, your point of impact is minus 83 millimetres, 1.8 mil, uh, 1 minus 1.9 dots, which is minus 25 clicks. So, in effect, what you could do is if you, if you do 25 clicks at 0.25 MOA per click, that would enable you to um, shoot using the crosshairs at 50 yards. Also as well, it gives you a point blank range here. You can put in a kill zone and it tells you what the ranges are that you can use your um, crosshairs for a different kill zone. So um, it's quite a useful little app, um, quite compact on a phone. 
you might prefer that than using the one. You might find it more convenient than using the one on the computer. So there we go. That's all I've got for you on this little video. Hope you found that useful. Well, that's all we've got for this one. Bit of a marathon. If you're still with me, thanks for hanging in there. There was a lot to cover. Don't forget, if you find this useful, then please like, share and subscribe. It's all free and it helps the channel. That's all from me now and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.